If there's one thing that the pop music industry knows how to do very well, it's captivating its audience with engaging choreographies, attractive lights, and excellent performances. Pop music today has reached an unimaginable place worldwide. People of all ages have surrendered to the rhythm of the beats, and this industry has remained at the forefront for decades. But does it have a dark side? Does this music persist today solely for its beats, or are there also secret packs being made? It's in this video that I'll talk about everything without withholding anything. So if you want to know what is hidden in the pop music industry, beyond what you already know, stay with me until the end. Before we begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel. It's very easy and doesn't cost anything. Just click on the subscribe button and next to it, a bell icon will appear. Click on that bell and select the all option so that you don't miss any videos I post, okay? So, let's start. You may know that pop music has some effects on well-being and pleasure in our brains due to its intentionally repetitive beat. The rhythms that have topped the charts the most followed this model, generating a sense of pleasure and joy in people. However, on the flip side, not everything that glitters is gold. This dark side is not only fueled by sensual and profane songs, but there is something behind the scenes that the general public does not see. And it's no wonder that pop music carries in its lyrics wickedness and sin. But in this video, we won't focus on the sensual lyrics of the pop market, or even on subliminal symbolism, like the all-seeing eye present in music videos or references to the devil. Today, we will talk about the deeper side of this music industry that seems subtle and often goes unnoticed. You may have noticed that most female pop singers, when they enter this market, undergo significant changes in their way of dressing and even speaking. Some of them start with a sweet and romantic image, showing vulnerability and even innocence. But have you ever wondered why they transform over the course of their careers? The pop music industry doesn't seem to be so kind to those singers who make a pact with it. This market demands that its contracted artists lose their sweetness and vulnerability, all as part of the plan. The initial idea is not just to make them sensual, but to shock the entire audience with a new persona, meaning the new identity of the pop singer that will be revealed to everyone. The strategies used for this range from the classic example of shooting a music video showcasing their new persona, as Taylor Swift and Miles Searles did, to the example of Katy Perry cutting her hair to launch her new era. Other pop singers follow this legacy between discontinuity and rebirth, with exotic recordings, provocative clothing, new names, new hairstyles, and even tattoos indicating a reset. This makes me reflect on something. The closer a singer gets to what the industry demands, the farther away they become from God. The more provocative this new character is, the further they also get from the tastes of their audience. And so, the audience ends up with two choices. Either stop following or admire this new character even more. Notice that the change demanded by the industry to ensure success makes the pop singer change their way of being drastically. It's the true domino effect, one abyss calling another abyss. Thousands and thousands of followers become similar to those they admire. It's not just about producing and selling, but influencing. Whether it's the new rhythm, the new appearance, or even the new lifestyle. Everyone is being shaped into the new standard, and they call this the new era. But still talking about pop singers, a question arises. Are they closer to who they truly are? Or are they farther from their true selves to ensure their success in the music industry? We're not here to judge, but to alert. If none of these pop singers manage to stay in this industry without undergoing this process of dispersion, why believe it seems good? In the last century, Sigmund Freud, the creator of psychoanalysis, said that this process of losing one's identity in the name of an industry happens when a person feels that their personality is split. To explain it better, when a person feels that their true identity is divided between two paths, they end up creating a new identity to not lose anything. And that's exactly what happens in the minds of most who enchant pop music, losing to not lose. But another big question that made me question all of this is, who is behind guiding the steps of this industry? Are they the big controllers of the occult world? Or the billionaires who receive a flood of dollars with every hit released? We already know that there is a spiritual operation behind this industry. Demons feed on sin and occultism. That too, we already know. We are tired of knowing that the spiritual world governs the physical world, 
and that many of the beats of these songs are dedicated to demons. Many pop singers have said they sold their souls or encouraged it. Whether they sold their souls or not, one thing is certain. Those who follow this rule don't need to look like the devil, they just need to follow him. We also know that it is precisely because of the carnal lyrics of these songs that crowds continue to be fed with every click. In other words, all the music made here on Earth that combines sensuality and occultism with a catchy beat stimulates our neurons, opens portals to hell, and allows demons to influence their lives. It's a true network of influence. But the question I posed was about who is behind this great industry, isn't it? Despite the constant involvement of prominent occultists in the production and propagation of pop music, if it weren't for the singer's desire to be someone beyond who they are, this industry would not have survived its first decade. Pop singers contracted by the industry are increasingly abandoning their true identities and conforming to a pattern that comes from somewhere else. But this can only happen if pop stars renounce their own identities to follow the world, that is, the pop world. Do you remember a man in the Bible named Samson? He was consecrated to God from birth and had a covenant with God which was not to cut his hair. Samson through this vow let his hair grow and braided it. Through this covenant with the Lord he received strength to defeat the Philistines and dedicated his life to doing God's work. Until one day, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah. This woman seduced him and managed to find out where he drew his strength, which came from the vow he had made with God. So, she had a plan, and this plan was to cut Samson's hair and deliver him defenseless to the Philistines in exchange for silver coins. After several attempts, Delilah finally succeeded in executing her plan. In one of these attempts, she received help to cut Samson's hair and handed him over to the Philistines, finally obtaining her silver coin. And if you look at this story, you'll see the life of someone who negotiated their identity as a man of God. Samson traded his Nazirite vow for the passions of the flesh. He traded his true identity to do what Delilah really wanted. And notice that I am drawing a parallel between the life of Samson and the lives of many pop singers. I am also comparing Delilah to the pop music industry. Just as Delilah had a good appearance, seduced and stimulated Samson's neurons, so too is the illustration of pop music. And just as Samson did not know the hidden side of Delilah, those who make a pact with the pop industry will see that to stay on top of the charts, they will eventually have to reveal the secret of their great strength. What I mean is that to be reborn in the pop market, these singers will have to renounce their precious treasure, that is, their own personality. And we have other examples in the scriptures of men who abandoned their true identities because they were torn between two paths, following God or receiving fame and applause. Solomon, the son of David, was one of these people. King Saul was another who denied God and turned to the occult. The plain truth is that it's not worth gaining the whole world and losing your soul to the devil. It's not worth conquering fame and applause in exchange for selling your soul to the enemy. And when I say selling the soul to the devil, I don't mean making satanic pacts, but handing over your soul as a bargaining chip for fame and likes and having your power of influence taken for evil. Brothers and sisters, we are the generation of influencers and we choose how we will influence and who will influence us. In this case, we can turn to the example of David, a man who had a heart after God's heart, and who, despite his mistakes, did everything to please the Lord, even if it cost him his own reputation. David loved God with all his heart and cherished his presence. And another great influencer of good that we can mention here is the example of Jesus himself, the Word of God says that he didn't care so much about being God, but he chose to empty himself of his glory to win souls through his good influence. And this should be our goal. This is the secret to not falling into the songs of Delilah's industry. It is to seek to be like Jesus who was gentle and humble, without clinging to oneself but doing what he himself taught, to renounce one's own will to do the will of the Father. Brothers and sisters, pop music is not heard by everyone around the world. The pop market continues to make billions a year with its sensual songs and catchy beats, turning its contracted artists into avatars of the new era that promote Babylonian culture and all its occultism with subliminal images and symbols that, to continue gaining in this industry, will require a renunciation, abandoning your own personality for the birth of a new one, thus emerging the new character empty of self, yet full of popularity.
it would be good if all this disconnection were not necessary. But to continue in the market, it will be necessary to say, as Taylor Swift said, my old self is no longer here. But brothers and sisters, in Christ, we don't need to follow the example of many, but we must follow the example of Christ Jesus himself, who even being a king, even having all the power, even being God, did not consider it something important to cling to. He influenced with love and grace, raising a sea of influencers who are now scattered everywhere, influencing this generation to live in holiness and walk like David, thirsting for the presence of the Lord, seeking to please Him, even if it requires denying the desires of the flesh to live the will of the Father, which is good, perfect, and pleasing. Amen? I hope this video has spoken to you, so like, share with your friends and family, and I'll see you in the next video. May God bless you powerfully. A big hug.